When we were studying improper integration, it was often the case that we had some integrand that was challenging that we didn't know how to integrate. And so what we did instead is that we only cared about convergence or divergence. We didn't care about exactly what the value converged to. Then we could really widen the class of integrands that we were able to do because we could compare the integrand that we had that was challenging that we didn't know how to do to an integrand that we did know how to solve the question of whether the improper integral converged or diverged. So we're going to repeat much of that story again for series. Just as it was for improper integrals, for most series that we're faced with, we actually don't know what the value is. We have a couple that we do know. In particular, we, we're really familiar with geometric series and p-series. And there's a few other ones that we have. We've gotten some answers by the integral test to figure out that some series are going to converge or diverge. We've played around with telescoping series. These are not the only ones, but geometric and p-series are the main ones where we have a really solid answer as to whether or not they converge or diverge. So instead of trying to compute the value of a series directly, because that's really hard, just like integrating is generally really hard, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the messy things that we're faced with with one of the series that we know the answer to and use that as a basis. Take, for example, the series that is the sum of 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. In my mind, the plus 1 that I have here, it really shouldn't matter. As n gets large, 2 to the n is enormous. And adding plus 1 to it really doesn't make any difference at all. Effectively, the series is 1 divided by 2 to the power of n. That should be sufficient. Yet, somehow, we don't currently have a way to compute what this value is, even though we sort of heuristically think the plus 1 doesn't matter because it's completely inconsequential to the, compared to the 2 to the n, we don't actually know how to figure out that this series converges or diverges. But 1 over 2 to the n, I know that one. The sum of 1 over 2 to the n, that's a geometric series, and I know it converges. So I think I should be able to compare the two. So the exact statement of our theorem is this. It is exactly analogous to what we had when we did the comparison theorem for improper integrals. Namely, if you have one series AN that is smaller than a bigger series BN, if the big series converges, so too does the small one. Or conversely, if the smaller of the two diverges, then so too does the bigger of the two. It's exactly the same as when we had a bigger function and a smaller function. The only condition that I'm really putting here is that everything is a positive term. We need this, for example, if you had one function that was bigger than another one, if you demand that they're both positive, then it really is squeezed between zero and the big one. But if you don't demand that they're positive, it could be that you have a bigger one and one that diverges down to minus infinity. So as long as they're both positive, you get this nice result. So our basic method is going to be, look at what we have, write some inequality that compares it either to a p-series or a geometric series, and then determine that it diverges or converges by the comparison to the geometric or the p-series. So let's look at a specific example of this. The one that we were faced with before, the sum of 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. Now whenever I'm writing out inequalities, I like to begin with something that I'm really confident about. So in this case, it's, it's not that uh, complicated of a, of a series, but I for sure can begin like this. 2 to the n plus 1 is bigger than 2 to the n, right? No ambiguity there. And then I can rewrite, rewrite this as 1 divided by 2 to the n is going to be bigger than 1 divided by 2 to the n plus 1. So in other words, in my, my theorem, you can sort of think of this as being your a n and this as being your b n. That is, the a n's are going to be smaller than the b n's. However, the b n's are going to converge. The, the sum of n is equal to 1 to infinity of 1 divided by 2 to the power of n, it converges. And it converges by the fact that it is a geometric series with an r value being less than 1. I don't know, by the way, that geometric series are usually started at 0 if you want to get to the formula that it converges to a over 1 minus r. In this case, it's starting at 1. But that doesn't matter. The, the first number, finite number of terms doesn't affect the convergence in any way. So nonetheless, the bn's converge, and so the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 converges 
by the comparison test. So the BNs converged as they were a geometric series. We proved that the BNs were bigger than the ANs, and therefore the ANs also converged by the convergence test. Noting, of course, that both the BNs and the ANs are positive, so the assumption of my test is going to hold. Now, note critically here, I'm not claiming what the value of this series is. I'm not claiming it converges to some number. We can figure out what the geometric series converged to. I'm not claiming that it converges to that number. I don't know what the answer is. All I'm claiming with the converge comparison test is that it does converge. And this is exactly the same as the situation with improper integrals. We were never claiming that an improper integral converge to some value. We were just saying by the comparison test for improper integrals that it must converge. A little bit more complicated of an example. Uh, I'll begin with two things that I know for sure. n cubed plus one is for sure bigger than n cubed. And also, if I look at the denominator, n squared minus four is for sure less than n squared. The one that's on the denominator, maybe I'll manipulate, I'll say one over n squared is gonna be less than one over n squared minus four. And then putting this all together, if I look at the entire thing, the n cubed plus one divided by n squared minus four, both of these inequalities work in the same direction. It, both the numerator and the denominator mean that this is gonna be greater than n cubed divided by n squared, which is just equal to n. So if I again refer to the thing that I have as a n and the thing that I'm comparing it to as b n, well, the sum of n equals one to infinity of the b n, this is just for sure gonna be diverging. n is equal to one to infinity of n, this is like one plus two plus three plus four plus five, this thing is going to be equal to infinity, it diverges, and so the original sum, the sum from one to infinity of n cubed plus one, all divided by n squared minus four, it also diverges, and it diverges to the same thing of positive infinity.